Sorry. In connection with Virya Sambhojanga, by overcoming laziness and the observation becoming good, then piti occurs, spreading throughout one's body. And so the one feels joyous and then peaceful. It said, Pasadakayo Sukang Vedeti. The one whose body becomes tranquil experiences uh, <clears throat> experiences happiness or comfort. There's no more. There's no mental suffering. There's no physical suffering. So this one feels very, um, a very cool and peaceful type of happiness. This is happiness that is not. Uh, in, that is not connected with any of the sense objects that one likes, niramisa sukha. It is the true happiness of the Dhamma. So because we are beings that live in a world of the senses, our minds tend to be let, delighted by sights, by seeing beautiful sights, hearing pleasant sounds. Also, our mind can become delighted. And also uh, inhaling fragrances or experiencing good tastes. These two make the mind delighted and they make us feel happy and peaceful. There's pleasant touch, touch between male and female. And ordinary types of touch and when uh, having experienced touch the mind and, and body feel happy and this is happiness of course but it is a dangerous type of happiness and even can be fatal when one practices and reaches this point of experiencing delight in the Dhamma, those who like sense pleasures come to understand that there's nothing very good about the sense pleasures. So with the practice, the mind is made stable and clean and piti arises and then there is tranquil happiness pasadakayo sukhang vedeti and so one experiences this having uh, because the body is tranquil and peaceful one experiences happiness peaceful happiness and this leads to the mind becoming collected Sukino chitang samadhiati, the one whose mind, the mind of one who is experiencing happiness, sukha, becomes calm. And that when the object arises new, the, the mind falls collectively on this object. This is not something that happens by for free or by letting our minds go freely it is the result of good work and especially when one reaches the stage of uddhya this kind of uh, collectedness occurs in a special way the mahito yatabhutang pajanati when when one's mind is concentrated then one sees things as they are. At this time, kanika samadhi, momentary concentration, becomes good because it has momentum. And starting with the rising and the falling, as soon as the object arises, the mind falls collectedly on that object, and it falls collectedly 
on the end of the object also. So when there's when stiffness arises or tension or movement, the mind falls collectively on this stiffness, tension or movement and all other objects too. As soon as the object arises, the mind falls collectively on it. And also the mind falls collectively on the ending of the object. So at this point, the samadhi is very good. And the Buddha used the word chete kagata. This, um, this type of samadhi is that of the bhavana mind falling collectively on a single object. This is kanika samadhi. And it falls collectively on every new arising object. So I can't recite the Pali that Sayadawji recited, but it's a passage about kanika samadhi. And it uses the word sopi. This samadhi also this text indicates that this type of kanika samadhi is not the samadhi of absorption of apana, but it too falls collectively on the object without a break. So in the body, with every newly arising object, whether it's mind or matter, For example, with matter, there may be hardness or softness. There may be flowing or solidity, stickiness, heat, cold, warmth, lightness, stiffness, tension, movement, shaking. And as far as mental qualities, there's seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching thinking, there's seeing consciousness, sorry, seeing contact, hearing contact, smelling, tasting, touching contact, and then there's the uh, sense of that it's good to see, the, the feeling that exists at the time of seeing, that it's good to see, good to hear, good to smell, taste, touch, and so on. These are the things which the object is to observe. These are observable objects. And the mind falls on the arising object both at the start and at the end. And so the yogi sees the start of the object, the end of the object, and also the mind sees that the mind goes away. So this is called pativipassana. One vipassana is to see the ending of the object, but with pati vipassana, not only the one sees the object disappearing, but one but one also observes that the mind disappears, the mind that observes the object, and at the stage of uddhyabhyanyana, this is very clear. So it is said, avikepo samadhi. That is, that the mind doesn't scatter, but it it falls collectively on the object. And it's collected just on one object. It It stays there, sticks there. Samadhi functions to collect the mind and the mind states that occur with it on the object. So therefore the mind falls collectively. It's all gathered together on a single object, on every arising object. And how it appears to the yogi is that it appears, uh, calmness is what appears. It It appears to be stable. So at the start of the at the stage of Uddhya this kind of samadhi arises. And this samadhi 
is a factor of the knowledge of the path, Sambodhi. It is also a, a supporting cause of the person who comes to know path knowledge. So when this um, type of samadhi arises, then vipassana knowledge is sure to come. This samadhi is very collected, and it, it's collected moment after moment on every arising object. So it is a factor of the, the knowledge called uh, sambodhi, and it is, a, it is a supporting cause of the person who comes to know this type of knowledge, path knowledge. So it is called sambojanga. And together with the word samadhi, we have samadhi sambojanga. In one's body, on the observable objects that arise moment by moment, ever anew, this momentary concentration, kanika samadhi, it's said in Pali, chitang nichalang tapeti, that it makes the, it, uh, it places the bhavana mind unshaking on the object. The bhavana mind is the mind that has been developed, that is being expanded, enlarged. And so when the mind is placed in this way on the object so that it doesn't move, then the mind does not go to a comma, an object of the senses. One by one, it it is placed on the arising object time and again. And what it is like, it is said, apidoya. It is like the focus of absorption. It is like in the same way that in jhana, the mind falls collectedly on the object. So too, the mind falls on the vipassana object. So this is what is said in the text. It means that just as one who practices absorptions, their mind is stable on an object, so too the mind of the Vipassana yogi is stable because of kanika samadhi on a single, on the object. But the difference is that in absorption practice, in, develop, in the jhanas, the mind is placed on a single object. There's just one object, and the mind stays on that object. Whereas here, there are various objects. There are many kinds of objects. It's every, every newly arising object is where the mind is placed. These objects are objects that are really there, and the mind is placed on the object as it happens. So this is the difference between these two types. So making the mind stable like this, making it able to observe the object one by one doesn't occur for nothing. How it occurs is described as aramane pavutamano. That means when, when they're seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, at the moment of lifting, at the moment of moving, at the moment of placing, at the moment of bending, stretching, blinking, opening and closing the eyes, all these moments are the fields of observation. And within these there are little bits to be observed that are ever new arising and little observable spots. So on every newly arising object, the, uh, the mind should be occurring continuously 
it's described as the word pavatamano, right when the object is happening, the mind needs to be there, not after the object has happened and not before it happens. So the, it has to be This observation has to be occurring right when the object happens, and one observation must follow another without a gap. It must be continuous, so it's said Narantarang. This Kanika Samadhi must be uh, happening without a break. One moment of observation has to follow another without a gap. It needs to be continuous. This samadhi only occurs if there's continuity. And how it uh, has to appear is ekakarena. It appears as though it's just a single thing. Although the object is changing, there are many objects The object may be seeing or hearing or smelling, tasting, touching, standing, sitting, walking, lying down. But this focus on the object occurs in the same way every time. So it has the same, it looks, it looks as though the samadhi is seamless. There's uh, just one appearance. And only then will it make this, only when it occurs in this way, as though it's a single thing, can it make the mind, the bhavana mind, calm and stable. So the yogi's job is to make the mind occur in this way, make the samadhi occur in this way. Ekakarena, aramane, puvutamano, to make the mind occur in the arising object as it is happening so that it seems like it's one 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 continuous thing despite the changing objects so when uh, at the stage of uddhya bhyanyana to the extent that our observation is good that our sati is good then the samadhi will become very good. The object appears very quickly, and the mind falls on the start of that, as soon as that object arises, and it falls collectively also on the end of the object. There's no gap. So, sorry, this is... uh, this is not something that happens casually. It's not something that happens uh, for nothing. It is the result. Sorry, it is also not something that needs to be deliberately created. This samadhi occurring in this way is simply the result of respectful, meticulous, continuous work at trying to observe the arising object. So if one is careless, then this type of samadhi won't observe, uh, arise. If one is not respectful towards the practice, meticulous and continuous. Today, Sayadaji saw a yogi, and he doesn't know how long the yogi has been here, but the yogi was just going along as in an ordinary way, not like a yogi, just ordinary. And Siroji said, if there is no respect for the work being done, then uh, no matter how long one stays, if one stays, uh, if one doesn't have respect for the work, then it won't make any difference whether one is here for one month or two months. As long as one has the mind that does not value the work of Satipatthana, then there won't be respect towards the practice. And without respect towards the practice, 
it doesn't matter how long one tra- one practices there won't be any difference in this way one doesn't let the mind go slack and one also doesn't let the mind scatter the mind is being collectedly collected onto the object and when one sees that the mind is calm like this how will the yogi feel the yogi will feel happy and delighted clear it's like when parents see their child graduate and get a degree the child is no longer misbehaving the child has become well behaved gained an education and just an ordinary degree but the child is well behaved this grown up child so the parents feel very satisfied to, to see that when parents see a child a son or daughter that is misbehaving that is uh, doing the wrong things how will parents feel satisfied how can they feel satisfied with this but at this point the yogis have put energy into their minds different types of energies and they've uh, attained this good result so one feels satisfaction because of the practice the one has done and when knowledge arises how much more so will satisfaction arise so at this stage the um at the yogi sees how the object arises the mind is there to see the how the object arises arises and it also sees how it disappears the the mind the, the yogi sees how the old is continually being replaced by the new in a very quick manner so at, and the practice at this point the observation is very workable everything is working well and one's one's knowledge is very clear therefore delight in what what one is doing arises and this is called dhamma rati the delight in the dhamma for <clears throat> this to happen this dhamma rati it doesn't happen without a cause it doesn't happen because we prayed and then some powerful being gave it to us it didn't happen because we just sort of followed our ideas about how to do this and it also didn't happen uh through not coming to a place like this knowing the method uh one came to a place like this and this place uh qualifies as sunyagara this place is has very few human sounds there are some car sounds and there are bird sounds around but with regard to human sounds it is relatively quiet it is, and sonyagara means a place to live which is in a is in an isolated place santa chetasa yogi no this uh the mind a yogi is one who first of all makes the initial effort in the practice and then boosts one's level effort up a level in order to overcome laziness and then develops effort stage by stage increasingly until it reaches the goal this is a yogi and if one is a true yogi then the mind doesn't shake due to lust or raga there's no shaking of the mind due to dosa anger no shaking of the mind due to delusion or any other type of defilements there's no none, none that come can come in and disturb the mind 
So the mind is free, free of agitation, and therefore it's calm. Santa Cetasa. So what the yogi does, samadhamang vipasato, the yogi observes, applies the practice, and comes to see things as they are. First of all, one comes to see that there is mind and matter, nama and rupa. And then, continuing, one comes to see how this mind and matter are related as cause and effect. Further, one comes to see the various aspects of these uh, mind and matter which are related as cause and effect. They're not permanent. They're unsatisfactory and they have no inherent self. And further, one comes to see how they arise and pass away in a fleeting manner very, very quickly. The old continually being replaced by the new. And at this point, seeing the fleeting arising and passing away of phenomena, one will experience amanusiriti. This is a delight that is not the delight of the human world. It is not the delight of the sense pleasures that are found in the human, human world. The human world is full of sense pleasures, but this delight is something different, something far better, because it is a delight in a single thing. Not, uh, and this type of delight, it never gets boring, it never gets old. It's one that it's a type of delight that one won't want to let go of. One won't want to exchange it for anything else. Worldly pleasures, sense pleasures, get boring. How many times can we see a movie that we like? How many times do we go to see it? How many times can we hear a pleasant sound? How many, how many times can we hear the same sound, this pleasant sound, without becoming bored? How many times can we smell the same fragrance without becoming bored? Or the same taste or the same touch? How, how much can we experience it before we want something else? But this delight is not like that. This delight is something that one never gets tired of, never gets bored with. So this happens when one develops the good mind and knowledge. This, uh, when this good mind and the, and the knowledge progress, then this type of unrelinquishable happiness arises. And the Buddha described it in, in the way just said above, and this type of happiness is very good. In the world, those who like pleasures, who like to enjoy things, live with a companion and uh, so that they can enjoy things. And uh, however one gets bored in time and one replaces the companion one after another. And this is what happens. One gets bored with the, the things one experiences so we make our mind happy with one new object after another. You know, we get one, one type of thing after another in the world. But this Dhamma is not like that. At this stage, when one sees the very fast arising and passing away of phenomena, the mind experiences a special type of happiness that doesn't involve any companion. It is, a, it is a happiness that arises with the developed mind and with knowledge. And this happiness is something that when one experiences it, one doesn't want to exchange it for something else. 
one doesn't get tired of it. So when one has this type of happiness as one's companion, then one won't want to back off from the practice. One will only want to advance. And uh, it's as the yogi practices, the observable objects become very, very quick. And before, the yogi was able to label the objects, and because of labeling, the mind was able to meet exactly with the object. The mind and the object uh, were an exact fit. But now, when one tries to label, one doesn't have that fit anymore. The mind can't meet the object exactly. And so one finds it hard to label. So there's two ways that one can work with this situation. Uh, One is to just label what one can. And don't worry about anything else. Just label the ones you're able to note. And the second way is to drop the labeling and just watch these fast objects. So this is just how one has to work at this stage in the practice. And yogis, uh, yogis at this stage who are working who were, whose practice is going well, they come into the interviews and they say, Bhante, everything is going very, very quickly and I can't keep up with the objects. I can't keep up with them. So at this point, the meditation teacher has to say, well, just know what you can. That's okay. Just know what you can. Or if that is if the person is noting and uh, if, if you're going to note and if you're just going to, if you're not going to note, then just watch them. Just watch the objects without noting. If a yogi reaches this stage, if you reach this stage, just continue to practice because you will gain special dhamma for sure. This is uh, one of the factors of the, uh, the cause for knowledge jnana, bodhi jnana, to arise, sambhojanga. If one continues to practice, then the disappearance of the object becomes more prominent than the arising. So at that time, when the disappearance is more obvious, then the happiness and the peace that one had is no longer there. One has gone past these, the happiness and the peace, the joy. And then what one experiences is stable samadhi. The samadhi is very stable. And... um, and then also in place of the happiness or sukha, there is upeka, equanimity. And at that time, the samadhi concentration becomes even better than it was before. And therefore, the knowledge also becomes clearer. One sees in very minute detail the object so Sayadawji will um, talk tomorrow about how uh, from sam- Samadhi Sambhojanga, uh, Upeka Sambhojanga arises. He will explain this tomorrow and for today this is all. <laughs>